sickle cell anemia deadly and not to be taken lightly sickle cell almost killed me i've been living with sickle cell for 34 years sickle cell almost killed me in the year 2012. i wish i should not be a sickle cell again because there are times when you feel as if the whole world is crashing in on you Sickle cell disease is a global health problem. Nigeria is the greatest burden carrier with about 150,000 born and 100,000 deaths annually. Uh, this is troubling for Nigeria because Nigeria carries the highest body worldwide. And over 4 million people already have this disease in the blown out form. But over 40 million again carry the trait. So with continuous marriage of these people, we will find out that more will be born. So a step has to be taken, a drastic step to reduce this burden on Nigeria. So sickle cell disease, um, it's a genetic disorder, that means it is inherited and results when two parents um, carry the sickle cell traits. The protein that can deploy in the body is called hemoglobin. There are different types. The one that we call hemoglobin S is what is abnormal and results in sickle cell disease. So when two parents with the traits, means they have AS, get married to one another, they may give birth to a child and who are sickle cell disease. So either an AS and another AS, or an AS plus an AC get married, they may give a child with SS or SC, which is sickle cell um, disease. It takes about two days because the pain is very painful and I feel it in my bone very well because it is not a good thing to have this pain in someone's body. What is it? Why? 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 Well, um, the severity of sickle cell disease varies. There are um, cases which are quite mild, in which they may have crises just like once or twice a year. All right, and there are cases which are quite severe. All right, the severe case may get admitted ever so often, and then, um, so they get admitted in the hospital, they spend prolonged periods of time. It affects their, the children that are going to school, and um, the parents are kept away from work because of prolonged stay in the hospital. The last Antonio's crisis, that was last year, June. He was admitted in this hospital, only and son. So, they just admit, by the third day, you get to coma. So the crisis was so much. I bet one is one thousand, but the time they talk about crisis, oh my, how much they see? Rosephine, seven thousand per day. It's three thousand, but talk about meji, no juma. So I get bad phone. When I make bad phone, good fourteen days, seven seven thousand. So what you take? Time to talk about me. She mo. In Nigeria, the economic situation and not so easy availability of health care or high malaria environment, coupled with a lack of a defined and specific commitment from the government, may contribute to worsening the problem. We have an alarming rate of sickle cell disease in Nigeria because almost every family carries this trait. And when they carry the trait and there is no concerted effort to check their genotype before getting married, people continue to have more. The population of the country is huge and the government is here to put in place a concerted plan to stem this. There are ways in which we can put this in place so that by the time we put all that in, we will reduce the burden.
Daniel shares his ordeal with living with sickle cell for the past 40 years. It has not been easy if I must be sincere. It has not been easy at all. Due to the excessive pain you are meant to, to bear. For instance, there was a time I had crisis. My parents had gone to their place of work. I went to school strong, ill and hurt, only to be brought back home. So there was nobody to cater for me until they returned from there. And then mobile phone was not popular. So I, I just had to put up with the pain, excruciating pain. It, I can't describe it. I felt as if I would die that day. I had a great crisis then and I didn't know what really happened. It just started from chest pain. I thought it was an ordinary pain. All through the night I was unable to sleep. I was rolling, crying. I said all the prayers I knew in this whole world. Early morning, my mom rushed me here to UCH. Then I met a doctor and instantly I was an admission. And that was when they told me that I had crisis. And I was admitted for a week through pains. I went through so many pains, drug injection and so on. But I thank God because I thought it was going to be the end of the journey. If we do not have a plan, her population continues to grow. The larger number of people with the trait will continue to grow. And those affected by the disease will continue to increase. And it has been predicted that if Nigeria, for example, and the Republic of Congo do not take steps, drastic steps, to stem this disease, in the next 20 years, we will have a higher explosion, a higher number of traits, carriers, and a higher number of those affected. Sickle Cell Hope Alive Foundation, SCARF, is a non-governmental, non-profit, charitable organization. Her vision and mission are to enhance awareness for prevention and facilitate improved care by giving hope and support to reduce the burden of this disease in Nigeria. Adeinka Gladys Falusi is a distinguished professor of hematology with special interest in sickle cell disorders for the past 40 years. A retired professor of the University of Ibadan, who has published globally in the area of genetics of sickle cell disorders, breast cancers, asthma, and even malaria. Her pioneering work in this area has earned her several awards nationally and globally, most especially the L'Oreal UNESCO Outstanding Woman of Science, Africa 2001, amongst others. She is the executive director and president of Sickle Cell Hope Alive Foundation, SCAF, and happily married with children and grandchildren. The Sickle Cell Hope Alive Foundation was initiated in 2012, was inaugurated in 2014. But the journey began much earlier in my heart because of my, the antecedent of, my, of the excellent research of over 40 years of genetics on sickle cell disease. And this has been done globally. It has received acclaim and it has encouraged me to do something for community. SCAR was founded six years ago has made tremendous contribution to awareness creation on sickle cell disease in Nigeria, providing palliative measures for those people suffering from the disease, uh, capacity building, research and training, advocacy, policy dialogue, and networking with sister NGOs both in Nigeria and abroad to ensure that this concerted efforts are made to reduce the incidence of sickle cell disease in Nigeria. This country is the highest carrier of this body. We need to assist the government of Nigeria to see the import 
of this problem. So we decided that our objectives will be to support government to reduce the prevalence by empowering the community, the public, to know what to do with themselves by making informed decisions on their own, which is almost cost-free. Empower those who already have the disease. Assist them with drugs. They use routine drugs. They cannot afford most times. So we can supply some drugs, you know, which they have to use daily. We can also even give them hope by being emotionally and, and financially supportive of them. So they are not left with their families to carry the burden. I've been working with SCAR for almost two years now. I've uh, seen some patients with unusual complications because of the fact that they don't have um, they don't have access to care on time. And even when they have access to care, there's no money to be able to um, carry out the management. And one of them is uh, last month when I came. One patient came, was a 17 year old boy. But this boy can be carried by the mother because he looks like a 6 year old boy. Staff has a multidisciplinary team to work on this aspect of disease, this sickle cell disease. So we have a large group of people who are volunteers, pediatricians, surgeons, pharmacists, social workers, nurses, and so on, that help scarf so that we can look at the different aspect of this disease. Because it's not, it's, you can't attack it in one way and say, I'm giving them drugs. No, it's a multidimensional disease. And so scarf has the capacity to help. So we started scarf and said, we will look at those three areas empower the public to understand how to reduce the burden, empower the ones that are already having the disease to reduce the challenges they have and to support them. And thirdly, to do research in a multidisciplinary approach to help to stem the challenges that are occur in sickle cell disease. Professor Chinadum Peace Babalola, a pharmacist and professor of pharmaceutical chemistry University of Ibadan and an adjunct professor, Genetics and Bioethics Unit, Imrat, College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, gives us a tour of how the hemoglobin types are Let's properly detected. what goes on in this laboratory. In this laboratory, we are able to determine the hemoglobin, hemoglobin types of individuals, especially when we want to determine if people are sickle cell positive or sickle cell negative. We can determine it whether they are SS, AS, SC, and the like. And I will walk you through the different processes that take place in this laboratory. The first one is the hemo, hemo, hematology analyzer. We usually collect blood from the individuals. And once we collect, we do what we call full blood count using this analyzer. And with the full blood count, is able to tell us a lot of information. We call it retics of the individual, such as the packed cell volume, the white blood cell count, all the neutrophils. And in that way, we can tell whether somebody is anemic, whether someone is, has infection, and the like. And after this, we go on to, we can also confirm the PCV using the hematocrit that you have in there, where we put the blood in a capillary tube, place it there, it spins, and then it tells us the packed cell volume. You can open it, and um, it just um, measures it, and you can open it. Another thing we do here is to check the blood groups. People always want to know their blood group, whether they are A, B, and so this is what we call the A, B, um, slide for determining blood group and we have antisera here it can tell you your blood whether you're a b positive or negative we do other research with the blood we can collect dna so we carry out dna extraction you know the dna has to do directly with the gene 
we can determine the type of gene, the, whether the type of disease they are prone to, how they manage drugs when you give them drugs. So here we can extract the DNA using our kits. Once we extract the DNA, we go straight to nano drop and determine both the quality and the quantity of that DNA. It's not good enough, there's no need processing it further. And um, once we use this nano drop to determine the quality and quantity, then we are ready to do other research uh, procedures. This is the BioRad HPLC variant 2 system, um, which we use now for our hemoglobin uh, type determination. It is highly precise and specific. It determines the type of hemoglobin for sickle cell, for the diagnosis of sickle cell, and other um, for thalassemia. This equipment is highly, um, is very expensive because of uh, reagent, and so it is somewhat expensive for people to afford. But SCAF is collaborating with the unit. Incidentally, the president of SCAF is an adjunct staff of the unit and they are collaborating with the unit in subsidizing the cost of, of testing so that people can benefit and make bringing care you know, to an affordable level to them. We are proud of the fact that we have been able to bring those highfalutin, impressive research of over 40 years into use in the community. We have translated sickle cell, we can even speak about sickle cell to people in kindergarten to understand what to do with themselves. So we are happy that it's not just science that is standing up there, it is science that is going to the community and they can use it on a daily basis. Secondly, we are proud of the fact that we are not just leaving these patients to grope about. People do not give them jobs. They say, oh, he's going to die tomorrow or something, which is wrong. I was empowered and enrolled at the University of Ibadan 2015 for the empowerment skill where I learned so many skills which I'll be using to help myself today because most time when you go to get a job where they get to know the secret about you, they start downgrading you, you can't do the work, you can't do this. Well, I thank God now. I'm a graduate but yet I'm on my own. I'm standing on my own and people are even emulating me, envying me and I thank God. So we are sending them to places where we can empower them to have vocation. We pay for this at the University of Ibadan and other places to empower them so that they can be on their own, be able to supply their own financial requirements and be able to produce some things by themselves. This, and we are donating it to the glory, <laughs> benefit of mankind and to the glory of God. When they have problems, they have challenges, we are ready to receive them and do as much as possible. Even when people are in hospitals, we're able to go there and give them necessary help financially and so on. So we are proud of the total package of SCAF. In the past five years, SCAF has been involved in a prevention approach of sickle cell disease through two main frameworks, awareness and care. SCAF has written books that we distribute to people in schools. We distribute to the patients in the hospitals so that even these patients, when they cannot even find a doctor, they can find out how to take care of themselves, even their own homes, how to prevent malaria, how to take their immunization, when to take it. They must have a thermometer somewhere. Everything they need to have is in this box. We have some doctors now that volunteer in SCAF to go to some of those places and help us to you know, manage these patients. Also, we have um, counseling for these patients because it's not enough to give them drugs. Some of them take the drugs and they don't know how to apply what they are supposed to do, how to come to hospital regularly, so we give them counselling. We also um, try as much as possible to pay some of their care costs because many of them cannot even afford 
They will run away from hospital even when they are ill. So sometimes they call us and we answer the call. The foundation is equipped with a multidisciplinary team of researchers, medical and community-oriented professionals, all working together to assist in facilitating improved care of those affected with a sickle cell disease. There are some parents, they come religiously with their children. All the things they are selling have gone because of mind drugs daily. We empower them. We give them some financial assistance to be able to help their children. Beyond the expected of creating consistent awareness in the media, communities, marketplaces, or religious and educational institutions, the Know Your Genotype KYG clubs is set up to uniquely help establish even much wider awareness of the sickle cell disease. When I go to Undo State, somebody stood up one day and said at the lecture of, uh, uh, what's the name of this place? Achievers University. The whole university was closed down to listen to my lecture on sickle cell disease. And one of them stood up and said, why are you not in my Duguri? The thing is more in the north. Why are you not here? How many places can I be? How many places can SCAP go to? We're trying to start branches, but at the same time we said, okay, if we have KYG clubs established, it means KYG club is a club that we will empower to know what to teach about sickle cell disease. We give them books, we give them t-shirts, we give them brochures that they can use to get the facts right. We give them stickers for cars, we give them uh, flyers to drive around. So, they can know the correct facts and use them to start a club in a school. So if a club starts in a school, over the years, over the months, they will make more members. We start with an initial six members, and then the school, the school principal and the science teacher is part of this, and they make this grow in the school. After all the children in the school are empowered, they are neighborhood schools, they can be TOTs there. And then they'll have bigger meetings and bigger ripples will be formed. And then sickle cell education will be spread. The victims aren't the only ones affected psychologically and emotionally. Their loved ones and families are also affected. If the child have the crisis, may not know anything, but I, the parent, I'm going to feel pain in you. I'm going to be a child. So that's the village hospital. Professor Olaiwola Babatunde Shitu, a professor of surgery, College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, highlighted an interesting aspect sickle cell patients may suffer. He is also a consultant urologist and head of the urology division, University College Hospital, UCH Ibadan. Priapism um, as a disease is actually an abnormally long, or what we can call a prolonged erection of the penis and could last sometimes up to four hours or more, thereby resulting in significant pain and subsequently can cause a damage to the erection function. In sickle cell patients in particular, the outflow of blood at certain point will become deranged by the tendency of uh, the sickle cell to become sickled and become misshapen in such a way that the passage through which they should flow through to enable blood to exit the channel will become blocked. Priapism in a sickle cell uh, patient tends to be more common in the fairly early ages. Sometimes uh, within the first, second year, up to about 10 years. And then of course that there can be priapism that present later in some people when they are in their 20s uh, and beyond. Good morning, Good morning. how are you? I'm fine. Oh, come inside. 
Leg ulcer is another common aspect of the sickle cell disease suffered by its victims and Dr. Ayodele Ogunkayede shares more light on this. Oh, it has been an awesome experience working with SCAF. Um, they have provided a lot of uh, finance in the area of care of uh, leg ulcers in the sickle cell disease patients. However, by the second decade of life, the chronicity of the sickle cell disease starts to have impact on the skin. And this leads to what we call skin breakdown. And when this skin breakdown occurs between the knee and the foot, we call it leg ulcer. And because of the primary problem, which is sickle cell disease, that repeated and uh, recurrent cycling of the cells, which was in the situation of the wound, and this makes the wound chronic. We know it's something that can be prevented. And even when they develop, they can be managed. We, and it's important to know that for this set of patients, the cost of care is quite expensive. Luti Berry. Umawa, alo, awa ni e sekon. Tuba ti lo, atu pada si e sekeji. So, ocean she bae, bae, tima a treat e. Tima de tuwa treat e, alo. Tuba ti di oshuketa. Again, I to bear again. So, I don't want my friend to know to know that um, I have sickle cell because when we are fighting, they may use it to abuse me. But some, some of them, they move away from you. Some of my things are similar to the disease. Is it a transmitted disease? Whenever I go out, I remember my secondary school days. Each time. There is trouble in class. When it gets to my turn for the teacher to whip me, everybody will shout, Sego sir, oh my kulala. The pain was more than this, the sickness. Questions remain about the possible cure of this dreaded disease. There is a cure for sickle cell disease. It is called stem cell transplants. In this process, the stem cells are certain kinds of cells from the bone marrow that give rise to the normal blood cells. So these cells are obtained from a particular individual who doesn't have sickle cell disease and are transferred into somebody with sickle cell disease. And the person now converts from being a sickle cell patient to a non-sickle cell patient. That is, so it's called stem cell transplant. But it is very expensive, um, really, really very expensive. About four or five years ago, it would cost about 100,000 US dollars. All right, so that's the first challenge that is cost. The second challenge is you must have a compatible donor. And very often, it's, most donors are from siblings. That means that child or individual with sickle cell disease should have a sibling who doesn't have sickle cell to have a compatible donor. Now, that doesn't mean that in absence of siblings, you can't have a, a, com a compatible donor. You can, but it's more difficult. So that's a real challenge that creates a bottleneck in carrying out the same cell transplant. And it's not 100% cure. All right, so you may have like up to 90% success rate. So even if you transplant up to 100 patients, all right, all about 90 of them, you might have clean, transformed to a different genotype. All right, for 10%, some may die, some may not be, um, they may have a few complications arising from it. One thing that I'm hoping we will start soon is that we will add newborn screening in this part of Nigeria to our work. That way, the frequency will be known fast as children are born and parents can have adequate care of their children. Secondly, we will empower NYC in Nigeria to take our message of reduction of sickle cell disease to every nook and corner of Nigeria in the different languages wherever they are posted. I'm, I'm, I'm much more indebted to SCARF, at least for the health division. SCARF has instilled some discipline apart from knowledge into my psyche. I have learned to manage this crisis better than I used to. I think the government that if they can assist the SCARF to be helping us, because one try from what? If not, because of them, maybe I will have lost the child. I want to reject our philanthropies. I want to reject I want to be I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to do it.
peaceful story ko dip in Nigeria. Gidi gidi lowo awon ijo scarf pa pa lowo mo mo wa falusi. Ah, mo se gudugu meje yaya mefa tori mo an fun wa ni ogun. Mo fun wa ko da ta ba tun lo si bi meeting. Mo tun mo fun wa ni owo mo to. Pa pa mo se gudugu meje yaya mefa. Mo si se agbara tori ko lohun o ba n sanu ta won na ko lohun je kan dagba kan pe fun wa juba ilu. Awon doctor wa, awon nurse wa, a ma n pe won Sunday to ba sele. So I want doctor yen na dey respond leni fun wa wa da won mo wa lohun mo dupe pupo lowo won Olorun a ma ran won na lowo if we have well meaning nigerians who can support this organization they are, they 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 are working their talk and they are reaching out to these children and their parents we know the environment we are we live in that a lot of those who are potential sufferers and those who actually will suffer from this condition uh, may well not be able to look after themselves uh, and therefore it is foundations such as this that uh, uh, need to be adequately supported in order for them to uh, get them uh, across to uh, care. The integrity of SCAV is not in doubt. Everything that we do is very well documented. It's a, an NGO that is periodically audited we have our reports there on the website. We provide information to anybody who wants to come in. And even anything that comes into the coffers of SCAF is very well documented and recited. And the people who give us the money, either in cash or in kind, are acknowledged. And, but the important thing is the integrity. The members of the board and management are men and women of integrity and we are very, very confident that we shall not be found wanting in any way or form. You and I can join hands with SCAF to reduce the threats of more increase and to help persons already affected with sickle cell disorder age gracefully and achieve their dreams. Please help fight sickle cell disease. Let us fight sickle cell disease together. Let's all help fight sickle cell disease. As a people, let us make it a collective responsibility to fight sickle cell disease. Donate your money, time and resources. Visit www.scafng.org or follow us on our various social media platforms on Twitter at scaf underscore ng, on Instagram at scafng. Sickle Cell Hope Alive Foundation, SCAF, improving the quality of care and support for sickle cell patients.